My name is Michaela. And I'm Amber. And welcome to the Military Museum of Artifacts. We're going to give you a tour. So these diaries that we're reading right now are both from Lieutenant Bowser Boys. He was shot down during the war. My order, 9 to 1030 March. Dis discipline? Yeah. Discipline. Stables. I don't know. Nice day, bad, bit chilly all day. That is so cool because it's like, he's not like being super weird, you know what I mean? He's like, just little things, nice day, bit chilly. This is what happened today. Just like little mental, small little notes because literally there's not room for much. The mm -hmm. days are literally, in this one, that's a day. Yeah. And then that's a yeah, day. But, well, look at this one too. Then that's a day. Like So there's four days on one little page. Like that's... 21st, or 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. The Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So in these pages, there's eight days in two pages. Seven days plus a memo. Yeah. There's no such thing as eight days, Michaela. <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's like on each page, you can fit, well, eight days, like if you started a week over. Yeah, that's right. very true. Uh -huh. The diary we're reading now is Lieutenant McCurcher's, and he was shot down by the Red Baron's brother. Isn't that neat? The writing is so teeny. Mm -hmm. Very small. Can't make out a single word, it's so small. So this is a 1915 Brody helmet. Um, it is very heavy. What is that? It is 1.3 pounds. Really? May I? Yes. Oh, it is very heavy. Very heavy. They used to call that the shrapnel helmet. And speaking of shrapnel, here's a piece of shrapnel. It's very sharp. Would you like to touch it? Oh, yeah. I can see why you might need some protection from that. Oh, yes. Hey, Michaela, have you seen the model trench? It's pretty cool. Saskatoon Model Club built it. Wow, that's awesome. Look at the little toy soldiers and the rats and little mats in there. <laughs> wow, Amber, they really did an amazing job looking at the little poppies and the detail and even a barbed wire fence. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, Michaela, look. There's a German soldier down here. Look at all the machine guns and the way the trench weaves through the ground. It's pretty cool. Yes, it is, Amber. Yes, it is. So here we're standing in front of a uniform from World War One, and it's the same uniform as Victoria Bell Hannon wore. Between 1888 and 1918 is when Victoria was alive. Actually, you know, it's interesting. You might want to check out our 3D footage that we have of Nurse Alice wearing a nurse's uniform. It's pretty interesting. So the pretty cool thing about this um, metal disc is that it was sent out to the families and uh, next of kin of soldiers, nurses, things like that um, if you died of a direct result of the war. This is known as a death penny. So this is a gift box uh, from Princess Mary. It's King George V's 17 year old daughter. In 1914, she raised funds to send uh, every soldier in the armed forces a Christmas gift in this box, which contained lemon drops, chocolates, tobacco, cigarettes, sweets. That's interesting for a 17 year old to put all that together and, you know, send the soldiers a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that when it was raining outside, they kept their diaries in here as well. Yeah, I could see how that would be a plausible thing. So this is a World War One gas mask. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look like it would be very effective, but um, it's very creepy and very heavy as well. I'm sure you can feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. It probably wasn't very effective against the mustard gas or the chlorine gas. No, I wouldn't imagine so. And it's still, it's still really dirty. You can tell by my gloves that, you know, it's dirty, and this is probably from wherever this mask came from. Mm -hmm. So that's also interesting to note. Very. 
so this is an interesting artifact here. This is a World War One sur medical surgical kit for on the field. Um, some of this stuff is actually still used today, which is weird. Um, this is a bone saw. Just look at that real quick. I couldn't imagine what this has been through and how many people have been through this. It has been, yeah, it has been through, yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's actually astonishing to look at some of this stuff. We've got uh, a weapon here, not a weapon, but a tool to open up a uh, bullet wound and remove the bullet. It's quite interesting. Yeah, this one, this one is a little scary. It's a little scary. It's a little screw, kind of like a corkscrew, and it's just to put on the head and you twist it to relieve the pressure on the brain. That's pretty mm. interesting. Here, look at that. They do still use this this tool today. It's very um very creepy. And rusty. Hopefully nobody ever has to do that to one of us. Yes. So now we're in a different part of our museum. Um, we're standing here with some other artifacts, some men in uniform. Um, however, it's pretty cool. We've got this World War One stretcher, and as you can see, it's obviously very stained. Mm -hmm. It's obviously been through a lot of action. Yes. Yes. And we know that it's stained probably from blood. So Probably, it. and who knows what else. Yeah. Let's try to lift it up and see if it's how much this thing weighs here. Sure. It's not not too bad. Not too bad, but, but you had a weight of a body, and yeah. I'm sure that's awesome. Thank goodness they didn't have to wear uniforms like ours back in the day. Yeah. At least not on the field. We would especially like to thank Amber and Michaela for being our presenters. We are impressed with how they performed with no practice and very little time. Until next time, girls.